Hey Robot Makers, how are you doing? Hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to build your own robotic bunny uh, and know some of the mistakes I made as I made mine? Then let's dive straight in. So my name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Right, let's get over to my notes. Somebody accused me of being uh, death by a PowerPoint this week, so I'm going to try and make sure we mix it up a little bit. Uh, so yeah, the session goals for today is we're going to look at uh, BunnyBot, uh, or RoboBunny, or Bugs, as somebody's named him. We're going to look at the inspiration and design behind that. I'm um, also going to look at some of the design fails. Uh, so I've made quite a few of these along the way, and I wanted to share them with you, just so you don't get the impression that it's dead easy to build robots from scratch of your own design without any mistakes and getting it right first time. I'm sure some people can do that, but that's definitely not my journey. Uh, we're going to look at some of the new parts as well, um, how we've modeled them in the Fusion 360 and the STL files that result from that, and look at the electronics as well. So this is all powered by the uh, Servo 2040 board, uh, which is a great board for doing this kind of robot build where you've got loads of servos. And we'll have a quick look at the code as well. It's definitely a work in progress there too. Cool, so definitely inspired by OpenCat, uh, or PicoCat version 2. So I've got PicoCat here next to me. So this is a robotic cat um, based on a design that, that was, uh, I think I found it on Thingiverse first of all. And this is probably the, the very first iteration that I came across in Thingiverse. There's definitely a newer version of that. The limbs look slightly different, a bit like these ones, where they're just like a single servo going through, whereas these have got kind of a stabilizer effect. They're a little bit more solid. So this one has got the um, Servo 2040 on there as well, with all the different servos plugged in. And the reason I originally uh, made Pico Cat version 2 is because this board is just slightly too wide for this original design so there's no easy way of sort of attaching it so it's just a little bit loose there but functionally it works exactly the same uh, if i was to power this up um, it would work just the same so let's just try that if i just grab if i just grab this cable here and plug this into the back of the servo board it's just a usb-c and if i just plug this into this battery pack that i have here i think it's ready to go with some code which is the the demo code so it'll shake its head and wiggle its tail. It'll just keep doing that same piece of code over and over again. So it'll look left, look right. I said that, and then it doesn't do that. <laughs> Let's just try that one more time. So plug that in, it's gonna nod its head, look left and right, and then wag its little tail about 10 times. And then that's it, that's all it will do on that particular piece of code. So that's, that's the original inspiration for BunnyBot. So what I was thinking was, why not just take the head design and so here's the, the head design and basically just make this a little bit different. So make the ears larger, make the profile less like a cat and more like a rabbit shape, but essentially keep everything else the same. So that's kind of where I was first thinking of uh, and then it kind of went from there really. So back to the notes there. So yes, it's based on OpenCat, uses the Servo 2040 just like OpenCat Pico Cat version 2. The head profile and the ears are definitely of new design. We'll have a look at those in a second. And I've also modified the rear legs. So, and it doesn't have a tail. So the rear legs uh, have been modified and they now have this cool little springy thing. And we'll have a look at a little bit more about that in a minute. Because that, that's about, that's the first iteration. And we're on about iteration three now of the, uh, the rear legs. And it doesn't have a cat tail. You might have noticed um, on the intro, if I just go back to the overhead there. It has a, a floofy tail instead. This is just a pom-pom I made um, using the skills I developed as like a, a primary school child a very long time ago. So let's talk about some of the design fails, shall we? So one thing I discovered doing this project and lots of others previously is building your own robot is hard. Why this is hard is because you have to get the mechanical design right. That's one of my weakest skills. I'm not very good at getting mechanical things to fit just right. Um, the electronics... That's also a challenge sometimes. So on this one, the battery pack, where I'm gonna put that is a bit of a challenge at the moment. Um, however, I have got several battery options. I'm just looking around there. I've got this chunky one, but I've also got a, a much smaller one as well. And I go for these little battery packs, the kind of USB uh, chargers for your mobile phone. They're great for little projects like this because they have a USB-C output uh, straight into the back of the uh, Servo 2040 board. The code bit is probably the bit where I would find it easiest, but really that's the last piece of thing I would create. So I'd get the mechanical design right, I would print it out or construct it. I would then get the electronics right. Um, once that's all working, then I'll probably work on the code because without all that, the code is just the theoretical. It may or may not work. 
So the head profile, um, this is one of the things that I didn't get right first time. It's actually still the same one that's on the, the head at the moment. We'll have a look at that in the overhead. So the rangefinder, where the rangefinder, which is um, this, let me just get my mouse, this section here, where that pokes through, um, it goes flat against this ear profile piece. Now, if you don't quite get that right, it's going to it's going to force things it's going to create a bit of an issue and because the ears are so tall on the model uh, it also meant that i had to cut the model the, the the profile piece so that i could get the ears into place they couldn't sort of go in and, and slide which is what you can do on the the open cat model that's fine it just leaves this ugly gap so i need to redo that with a, a bit of a gap difference there this nose piece as well, I had to glue this piece on. Now, I don't know why I consider gluing things to be sort of bad or cheating, but I wanted this to all kind of push fit together and everything just sort of hold together there. So that's actually glued in place there. Um, and then where the servo sits behind this ear profile, I really like this as a kind of locks into place. You push the servo in and it locks that ear profile piece uh, against the rest of the thing and stops all these things falling out. However, this diameter here is the wrong diameter. It's just a little bit too large. And what that means is when this revolves round, it kind of pushes uh, the servo away from that ear profile piece. So that's not great, especially when there's a, a gap here and a weak point. And then there's a couple of things with the servo as well. So this survey, servo horn is the wrong way round. So if you've ever looked at a servo horn, one of these little uh, white things, and you've looked closely, there is actually two sides to it. So I'll show you the, the back side first. So there's the back side. You can see that clearly there. So there's like a tiny little indentation, but it's perfectly smooth. And on the other side, um, sorry, that side there, that's the inside. There is, um, there's like little zigzaggy lines that grip over the uh, the servo head, this sort of head of the spindle. So one side is smooth and doesn't grip, the other side really does grip. And I put these the wrong way around. You can literally see on there the little jagged bits that sort of grab onto the servo head. Uh, and then, and the reason I did that is because it wouldn't, I hadn't designed it properly. And when I put it the right way around, it wouldn't fit through the, the hole. So this, it, the inner piece is five millimeters. This outer piece here is seven millimeters. So this actually needs to have a seven millimeter hole all the way through it uh, with this piece here for the servo thing to um, attach to, to, to sort of be embedded within. Now, the other thing with this is this is too shallow. So it can move and it'll basically just jump out of that track um, and therefore not move the head properly and the head will just sort of like fall down with gravity. So there's quite a lot of work there on the head. Little tweaks here and there, not massive things, but uh, some things I certainly need to work on there. So that's the first thing with the head profile. The next one is the tibia. So I've got the tibias here actually. This is my new redesigned version. Now the, or the original version that I was working on again was too shallow so this servo horn would jump out the track uh, and it wouldn't it wouldn't basically be very strong against that and you can also see there these are still the wrong way around so they need to go through and that's the same reason the uh, the servo horn it needs to have a seven millimeter hole all the way through and then this piece here for the the servo horn to to sort of steer with so this newer version i've literally just finished printing this out this afternoon so if i just hold this up here you can see it looks a little bit different now i've got i've got a 3d model that i can show you a bit later on rather than just showing you on here but i wanted to make sure you can you can see these little pieces as well so i need to i need to do four of those i've currently got two printed out so that's the uh, the tibia the next one is the foot <laughs> now look what happened with the foot so the story with the foot is uh, i was working on this is the original one i did and it's actually really really small if i go back over to the overhead camera for a second just show you how small this is compared it's quite a lot smaller so it just proportionally didn't look right so if that was up there it'd be it'd be like a cat's foot rather than and bunnies have great big feet so that's why i had to redo this basically just adjusted all the sides sizes and made it much much bigger um but the concept works okay I'll go back to my keynote there so the concept is that we have a spring so when this jumps and it lands it's got a little spring to cushion it there and that, to be honest, works really well. This, this, I've got the spring diameter correct so that the spring goes over like this little circular bit inside um, and, and a similar kind of circular indent at the top there. And I'll just show you that. So that works really well. Some of the things that I found um, 
were a problem, the, the spring is actually a bit too strong. So when I put this into place and I try to uh, just move it, so I just kind of give a bit of force there like that, what happened was that little section there, it just snapped, you can see on the picture there, it just snapped. There's too much force being applied either side of that weak joint. And that's the weakest part of this foot. Um, it's where it's the thinnest part. And therefore that's where all the stress um, is gonna focus on and basically just break it. Um, the, the One of the reasons, that, there's a couple of reasons why that happened. So one, it's just too thin. We need to make that thicker. Two is this um, screw that's going through, this nut and bolt that's going through, is the same size, the same diameter as the hole that's going through it. So it's really tight as a fit. So it isn't very easy to sort of, you can see there when I move this, it isn't moving very well. It's very, very tight as a join. And then where this inner piece goes over this outer piece, so there's kind of like a shape like that. And then there's like a, another piece that goes inside it. The white piece goes inside the yellow piece. Uh, again, if you can see that on there, there's no tolerance between the two. So with there being no tolerance, that means the friction is causing that to just be really, really stiff as a joint. Now, I could wiggle that until it wears itself so that it works properly, get a file, maybe file it down, which is what I did try to do. Um, but that combined with the spring, combined with the nut and bolt, meant that this wasn't very strong and wasn't very great. So when I just I just tried to do that, it snapped. And I was like, oh, right, I'm going to have to print that again. <laughs> So I actually glued that one. So the one that's actually on the uh, uh, the robot at the moment, I think, is it that one? That's the one that actually broke, and you can just see that little line Sorry, there. Could you say that oh. again? My, <laughs> My phone speaking there. Um, so yes, you can see there. That's where the, where it's stuck together. Uh, now there's another thing with this as well. It broke along the layer. So where the layers are sort of adhered together. That is a weak point. If we'd have printed this in a different orientation, any different orientation, then that fracture line wouldn't have been able to fracture against that weak spot. So maybe that's something we need to think about as well. But I wanted to have a quick look um, at Fusion to see um, what we mean about these tolerances and how we can actually um, introduce these in our design. So I'm just gonna load up Fusion here. And let me just grab over, over here. So let's create a really quick model. So I'm gonna model up, um, Actually, that's the wrong orientation. I'm going to model up a SMARS robot really quickly. So we need to be on that plane there. Let's do a quick rectangle. And we are going to do this. And it's going to be 58 by 70. And then let's just pull this up by... Uh, let's just put that back on by 32. And we're just going to do a shell inside of 2. And then we're just going to do some... Um, fillets on these different sides here. So if I just flip that round, we can do the other fillets on the other sides as well. And that one, they should all be four. Uh, this is to show you how to do the, the tolerances, right? So we're going to just do um, some cutouts on here. And the cutouts we're going to do is two circles. So let's just do two on here. And let's make that one 4.5. This one is also going to be 4.5, so I'll we'll just click on that one. I'll just make them both horizontal. And then what I'm going to do is just make them 8 by 8, like so. And then this is going to be 8 by 8 as well. Okay, and then, I mean, we could go the whole hog if we wanted and just do the SMARS design there. So this is horizontal. That is 28, if I remember. That is 14. And then the height between them is 10, as I remember. And if we just do a line between those two and make that um, vertical, we can then make that center to that. Right, so we've got our kind of SMARS design. So I'm going to push that all the way through. Oops. And that one and that one. And I'm just going to say the distance is going to be um, all. So it'll just do to that point there. OK, right. So you might recognize that as being a SMARS chassis. So let's just do um, an appearance on there, make it, I don't know, yellow. This is just so that I can uh, make some kind of model that we, we can work with. Right. So I'm going to do something now. I'm going to put a spindle all the way through here. And I'm going to make it the exact size that this whole, this... Um, 
profile is already and that won't work for us when we print it out because it'll be too tight and the, the two will be sort of rubbing against each other so we can then introduce our tolerance to our design but let's just create that that new piece so i'm just going to go to new component let's just call this one spindle and let's just do a very quick design on that side there so let's just do a circle from the center point there and it's going to be let's just do 4.5 which is what we created the other one to be and then we can just push and pull that piece let's do e to extrude that and let's extrude it by 10 symmetrically like so okie doke so now we've got this spindle that's exactly the same diameter as our chassis so they're not going to when we actually print those out and we try and push that through it probably won't fit we'll probably have to file off some material from either the hole or from the spindle just to make them fit properly what we can do instead is we can introduce a tolerance so let's go up to our change parameters let's create a new user parameter and call this one tolerance and i'm going to do this as 0.1 and i found this to be a really good general works for everything kind of tolerance so what we can do um, where we, we can either make the hole bigger or we can make the spindle thinner so let's go for the make the thin the spindle thinner so where we've got that 4.5 if i just click onto that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to say um, minus the tolerance like so now if we wanted to make the tolerance um, i don't know twice we can just say tolerance times two and then you can see that it's 430 now so it's taken off 20 um, 0.20 mil from that particular measurement there so let's just finish that sketch if we now look at that uh, spindle uh, if we can get really close in and we look at it from the side profile we should be able to see that there's some white space around it uh, let's get a bit closer in so you can see that ah the reason it's not done that is it's using the old profile so we just need to unselect that and select the new profile there we go and you can see now we've got that gap between it and that gap if we were to measure that gap uh, between that point and that point we'll see that it's exactly two millimeters or one millimeter there and one millimeter on the other side 0.1 millimeter get my measurements right so that's how we can introduce tolerances we can use um, we can create our own tolerance there and we can use that throughout our model to make sure whenever we've got two parts that move together they've got a really good fit to them so that's um, I just wanted to call that one out so let's go back over to our our keynote and carry on a little bit so if you like what I do and you want to see more of this uh, make sure you like this video give me a, a thumbs up uh, if you're watching this on Facebook as well leave me a comment tell me if you are going to create your own robotic bunny maybe for Easter maybe for um, just because why not because it's a cool animal to create um, and hit the notification bell as well if you're watching this on YouTube and you always get notified whenever a new video comes out as well cool so let's have a look at some of the new parts i absolutely love the design that's just on the right hand side there it just looks really nice uh, and i'll show you that infusion in a second as well we can have a play with that right so these are the new tibias that one i just held up that's uh, printed out in white at the moment so what's happened differently on here so i've widened the holes first of all so that they were five millimeters they are now seven millimeters which means we can get that servo horn and we can push it through the correct orientation i can push this through um, and that means that we get a really good fit now so i've literally just printed this out and haven't even tried it out myself yet um, but that looks like that's going to work just right we we'll just need to give it a bit of a bit of force like so so if you can see there now there is unfortunately the, the lights are white maybe if i go for the overhead um, you might be able to see it a bit easier there so you can see the servo horn is just sat nicely in there and if i spin that round you can see that the gripper part uh, if i just hold that just so you can just about see that's inside there so that's working just the way we want it to now so that's that's the first thing the second thing you might have noticed on there as well is there's this little ridge here uh, the servo uh, horn cover and that means that when the servo horn goes in it's it's doubly locked in place so not only is it being locked in place because it's in like a um a cutout section it's also got like a little roof over the top at the end so that it won't move out of place once it's in there and we've got the screw into the servo horn as well so it's really really locked into place so that's an extra little piece i've done there i've also made it rounded because why not it just looks nicer as a design makes the robot look a little bit more organic and less uh less square and blocky so i need four of them i've got two already printed out there 
So then this was one of the funniest things to do. This and probably the, the head and the tail were the funniest things to do. So this is a little bunny foot. I put two little cutouts on it to make little like little toes on there. Uh, I made it nice round shape. I'll show you how that's done as well because it's, it's a really nice way of designing it. Um, it looks more like a, a bunny. It helps with the landing with the spring there and um, it's got this um, hole in it here where we can put uh, a bolt through it. So I've put a smaller size bolt on the ones that are actually on the live model now and they work much much better. So that's the that's the uh, the bunny foot and then the tail. <laughs> so I did a bit of DIY uh, primary school type stuff when I was designing this one. Um, so what I did with this is I got some wool um, and I got two pieces of cardboard that I cut into sort of donut shapes with a hole in the middle and then you do actually uh, cut out a little keyhole as well so that there's um, where the, those round bits are there's like a little channel bottom and then you simply just wrap the um, the wool all the way around many many times until it's really really thick you then cut around the um, through the, between the two donuts because they're sort of sat in between each other you cut all the way around um, and then um, and then you can put a piece of string around it tight ridiculously tight and you've got pom-pom it's, it's as easy as that it's really really good fun I'm just going to put that on mute there for a second so yeah pom-poms I did actually watch a video on uh, YouTube um, it's probably the top one um, about how to make this so it was really fun to make and it kind of took me back to when I was in primary school in uh, I think you call it kindergarten in the US uh, to when I was really young but it looks really fun so if I put this um, back into its power and I show you this wiggling uh, it's absolutely loads of fun let me just uh, get over to the overhead I've got it on its side so that you can see what's going on so if I just plug this in to this battery you'll see that he does the same thing as the other one <laughs> and he shakes his floof so there's just a servo horn there and I've just wrapped the wool all the way around it same here Adam I made uh, pom-poms about 30 years ago as well it's a skill that keeps on giving to be honest <laughs> so really really good fun and reuse of cardboard as well so those uh, Amazon um, packets are really really good for doing things like this uh, really good quality cardboard um, so it was good for that particular usage there so yes this robot is servo 2040 powered so we've done a few videos on this um, already so this is from uh, Pimeroni and it's got 18 servo headers on there so you can plug in up to 18 different servos it's USB-C powered you've got these um, uh, RGB LEDs as well which we can make a bit of a disco going on there make it uh, really fun and you've got all the usual kind of headers as well you can also put in some external power if you if you need to do that too uh, and it's powered by the RP2040 from Raspberry Pi organization which which means it's got tons of power it can work with MicroPython or C++ uh, and it means that it's a really really flexible thing to drive our 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 bunny so just like the Pico um, version 2 the Pico cat open cat this has 11 servos so it's got one in the head one in the neck one for each leg and one for each foot and also one for the tail as well and it's going to use the exact same code as the Pico cat however we do need to add an extra behavior which is the hop behavior so i'm in the middle of doing that and this is where i came up against all those issues where the servos weren't behaving properly and when i looked into what was going on it's because i had the servo horn the wrong way around so instead of gripping onto the servo uh, spindle it was sort of up there and it was just spinning freely and that meant when i made it do a behavior like hop uh, it wasn't doing anything it was just flopping on the floor so that's something i need to be working on so just as a reminder if you're watching this on replay you might not realize that I go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock GMT or British summertime whatever local to the UK is when I film it uh, but it means that you can join that uh, as well so I think I think we were just out of step by about two weeks with the US when it comes to daylight saving times but we're in that now so uh, BST you can also join on discord as well we have a really active group of people um, on discord it's quite a small group so it's really nice and uh, got that kind of family feel to it um, so if you want to join that you can head over to action.smarsfan.com uh, forward slash join dash discord and uh, you'll find us all there okay let's have a bit of a demo of uh, how this works and we'll also have a look in fusion at some of the parts so in fact before we do the code let's go back over to fusion um, so if you just go to me for a second while i bring up fusion again and what we'll do is we'll have a look at some of the parts um, that we've designed on there. So let's have a look at the profile first of all, because that's quite a fun one to look at. So just to check that is all good. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the profile. So you can see there, that's 
that one had the model on here has the pins going straight out but actually you can bend them so that they go straight down for the rangefinder which is fine uh, and one of the things i really like about this is these ear profiles if i just go to that ear profile and we have a look at how this is constructed um, so first of all i created one from the side and i didn't actually end up using that one let's uh, finish that sketch uh, i think is it the front one that's just the uh, to get yes there we go so this is the shape i went for i looked online to see what what does a rabbit look like <laughs> it's been a while since i had a rabbit so what does a rabbit actually look like so it has like uh, one circle and two great big circles there for its sort of its cheeks and then for the ear profile it's kind of got one line and then it's got this kind of uh, diamondy shape at the top kite kind of shape and then another one there and that just goes on to that round profile of the head so if when we extrude that out, so let's just move our timeline back a little bit to where we extrude that out. So it starts off being really blocky. It doesn't look that nice and round effect, but this is one of the things you don't have to design those curves in to begin with. You can play with them um, fillets uh, and make them really rounded. So that's exactly what I did. You can see that it's just filleted that edge there. And then the next one is going to fill it uh, the top. And then there's that spiky bit. So we then fill it that again to make that nice and round. Uh, I mirror that so we've got two of them join them together because I think they ended up being two separate pieces. I then did a little cutout design. So if I just get that uh, sketch switched on with the, uh, the last sketch. Um, yeah, so I designed a little cutout. Um, let me just turn them off for a second and join that together again. And then there's the cutout, which is sketch number four. So let's just turn that back on. So yeah, basically I just, did a profile of the outside edge and then used the tool that you can um, do an offset. So I did an offset by a couple of millimeters inside so that it was nice and round. And then I just cut out that piece there. And then what we end up with is like a really nice looking bunny head. I could have left them solid, but I thought it looks more, I don't know, more robotic to have them sort of hollowed out like that. So they're completely non-functional. They just look, look cool. So that was uh, how we did that. So let's go back to the uh, bunny profile there. And we've got the usual eye mask piece. That's the same. The side profile is pretty similar um, to the open cat profile. If we go for that and just have a look on the side for a second. Uh, and you can see there how all the pieces are, are supposed to fit together. So this is the eye mask at an angle. There's the range finder sort of poking through the eye mask. Uh, there's the actual range finder circuit board. And that's supposed to be really flush against this ear profile. So that but by being pushed that way, keeps it in place. And these pins can actually bend and go straight down, which is fine. Uh, and then the servo fits in just here and holds that into place. However, when I actually printed all this out and put it into place, um, these things didn't seem to fit properly. Uh, and what ended up happening is that, that where the cut was down here, it basically just split a, apart a bit more. Um, so that's that's the profile there. Let's go back to the full model and let's have a look if there's anything else on there worth calling out. That's probably about it for the head. Um, then we've got the, the bunny foot. <laughs> let's have a look at this one. So this is a really fun model to create. Uh, let's spin that around my spinning ability has really gone off so i'm going to show you the actual foot um, because i like the way that this was put together right so let's go right back to the beginning of the timeline on here right so so it starts off as quite a solid uh, piece um, and what i then do is bulk it out first of all i then create a little profile I think that's actually just for some of the other pieces up there. Uh, I then bulk that out. We can't really see anything happening there. Then there's another sketch on the side. Let's turn some of these sketches on so we can see what's going on. Um, so that's this. these are all for the spring. So then there's another one which uh, rounds out the, the base where the spring goes on. Let's just move that. You can just see there's like a little, if I just zoom in right on that there. You can see there, there's basically just a circular thing and then there's a cutout. That's what those steps did there. And then this one here then starts to round out all the different pieces. So lots of fillets to, to make the model just come to life. Um, so then we fillet the edges of the foot. There we go. So that one fillet manoeuvre there. Uh, there's quite a few different edges, just two edges that we're filleting out, but it makes the foot 
just look like a foot. And then I think the last one there is that that's just putting the spring in place and uh, where the spring attaches to on the upper piece as well. So yeah, that looks really fun and it's really nice in, in real life to uh, if I just grab hold of this and go full screen. You can see uh, what the feet actually look like. So they're really fun. They're absolutely huge. Uh, nice and flat on the bottom. I don't know if you can see the toes. Um, what's the easiest way to show this? Because they're white and I've got a very strong white light in front of me, it's not that easy to show that. You can see the floofy tail there as well. And there, there's the head. So it might be easy to show the feet on the uh, the overhead there. So you can just see the little cutouts for the toes. That was just a nice little detail. So there it is. I'll just put that back down like so. And I can also put that side by side to open cat. And you can see that it's almost identical apart from the tail and the head. So everything else is exactly the same. And that means that we can use the exact same code uh, as well for this robot. So let me just go back to Fusion and see if there's anything else worth calling out on there. So what I do for a lot of my designs, once I've designed the individual pieces, I'll then create another um, design, oops, going for the wrong thing there, which I call an assembly, and essentially just import all the different models into one model, uh, and then I can mock this up and see what this actually looks like. So there's the, uh, the larger model. And for a lot of the graphics I do on the, uh, the website, I'll, what I'll do is I will turn off all the object visibility, all the different um, joints and things like that. And then I might make the visual style so it's got those edges on, or I might just do it wireframe um, edges only. And what I can do in Photoshop is invert them so all the lines become white but transparent. And it just makes for really nice graphics for, um, for when you're trying to explain how something particularly works. So that's a bit of fusion stuff for you there. So let's now go over to, um, let's try Thonny is probably the easiest way. So let me just load up Thonny. And let me just load up the code for that as well. And we can have a look at how RoboBunny actually works. Right, let me just find the right code. There we go. Okay, so I've not plugged in the robot. Let me just plug it in. And it's probably gonna try and run its uh, standard code, so I'll just have to stop it doing that. And I need a right angle uh, connector on this as well, because it's, let me just say stop there. Right, okay. And we might be able to do that view there, where we've got the robot on display and we've got some code on display as well. So let's just move that down a bit so we can see what's going on. And let's just move that split for the shell as well. There we go. That's a pain. Right, there we go. And then let's just move this bottom bit just out of shot. There we go. Okay, so I've got um, a piece of code. I've got a couple of pieces of code that I've been working on. So one is like a library of routines. So what I tend to do is model the robot as a class, and then I'll create lots of different functions within that, different defs within the um, the class. So just ignore that. Let me find the robot. Ignore limb. There we go, bunny. So first of all, I'm giving it a name. And then I just create an array of legs. Now, I don't actually use that one. I am going to use that later on in, in later versions of this code. But to begin with, I'm just trying this out. So Laurie is asking a question. Is the Servo 2040 the only control board in RoboBunny? Yes. So that wire that's going there is going straight into my laptop. And you can see there that that Servo 2040 has got a great big chip uh, just where my thumb is there. And that chip is the um, Raspberry Pi. Just see the logo there. RP2040. So it's running MicroPython, which is what I've flashed on it there. You can just see it says MicroPython with the RP2040. And this is a special version of MicroPython, which I've got from the Pimeroni website. It's the batteries included version, specifically designed for the uh, Servo 2040. So the, the Servo 2040 library is kind of baked in. I don't need to include any extra files uh, in the file system there. You could use it straight um, with circuit python or regular vanilla kind of micro python but you'd have to have that servo library to be able to speak to all these specifically okay so here we are we've got this uh, bunny and what we can do i mean if i just go down here, let me just go to the very bottom of my code and just make sure i've not got anything else listed there 
think that should be fine. So if I just do import or from bunny import, um, spell import right, bunny. So there we go. It's trying to run some code there, I think. Yeah, it's trying to do its hop thing at the moment because I must have some code for doing the hop. So let me just try and find where that is and I'll stop it from running that. Let's just press stop for a second. I was just looking through that code. I didn't think it had anything in there for, for doing hop. Um, I must be in there somewhere. I know, I know what it is. So I've edited this code. The code I'm editing is on the, the PC and the code that it's running down here is I think on the local um, file system. So if I just upload that, it will overwrite it and it will get rid of that piece of code. So let's try that again. Let's just go back down to here and then let's say from, um, from bunny, import bunny. Like so it shouldn't hop now. There we go, right. So what we can get this robot to do, if we say um, b equals bunny, and then we say b dot name equals bugs. Hello, my name is bugs. If we now say b dot stand, it's going to grab hold of it so it doesn't kick everything off the desk. And it should have stood up there. Let's try stand up. There we go. <laughs> so he's kind of done a Superman thing there. That's probably because I've not got the. Uh, the limbs correctly oriented um, because I've been unscrewing and screwing them back in. Um, so let's go back to, uh, let's try sit like that. Looks like contorting there. Let's just say stop. And let's just do import again on there. Let's just reset. Let's just do be bunny. And then let's try um, hop. So hop is the new piece of code I've been working on. Um, so you can currently see there, this says hopped equals false, while not hopped, self dot front leg value is zero, hopped is true. Now I think I've got a newer piece of code for hopping somewhere uh, and that's not in there. Is it in here? Nope. Not sure where I put that then in that case. Um, duh, 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 duh. So what I need to do for the hopping thing is work out what the different stages of a hop are. So first of all, we need it to be sat ready to hop. So we need these, these limbs to be in this kind of orientation, like so. Uh, maybe that's like so. So it's kind of ready to hop. And then we'll probably want these two to do that, to make it hop and then make them stretch out as far as they can as well so there's two kind of actions there and we'll also want these to swing round as well and then while it's in the air we want these to sort of very quickly do this and then go back to there so there are the different behaviors the different steps of the hop that we'll have to code in there um, and that's kind of where I've got up to because I'm having issues with the servos being the wrong way round, and where I've printed out these new parts that I need to fit uh, before I can continue with my code, because I do kind of do it quite interactively, um, I will need to, to, to get those things fixed. Because what I was finding was um, the legs just weren't behaving the way I wanted them to. As you can see there, it's just a... So, uh, um, Hybrid Robot Dale says, arm should point up and forward for a hop. It depends what point in the hop you are, you are, you are starting with. So, if, again, we've just put these down here like so. I think... So you think they'll be like something like like that for the hop. So it can be like that. And what we do want it to do is sort of point to the right direction. So if they're like this, we we'll want them to point to the direction just as this is launching itself off like so. Now, when it does hop, <laughs> what I'm fully expecting to happen if it's on a hard surface is that these weak points will snap again. So I need to print out a whole new foot with a much stronger. Um, so this basically just needs to be doubled. I need to, if we took a line between there and there, that bit between them needs to be full uh, and that will make it much 
more, much more able to uh, to launch itself. Now the great thing is these servos are ridiculously powerful for the size of them, so they're really going to work. I do need to have some battery. I've got one of these. Um, grab that battery here. So this is the uh, the battery that powers the uh, trial bot at the moment. I've got a couple of these. These uh, two power. It's essentially just an eighteen six fifty inside with a little charging circuit, um, but they're nice nice size. That will that will sit either nicely either underneath or on top or even that kind of orientation on our bunny, which means that we can uh, we can basically just put some wire wire taps or wire taps. Um, I did have a piece on here that I was trying to uh, find. Let me just grab one of these. If I can grab that. No, that's. There we go. This. This is what I'm trying to show you. So on the uh, the trial bot, they have this Velcro, uh, and it's great for wrapping around the battery and basically just holding it into place. You only need two straps like that and it's pretty secure uh, to hold the battery in place. So I need to just think about how I'm going to do that and do we even need to print out a new um, bottom section there that's got some holes just to have this strap in place. But to be honest, I can probably work out how to do that um, with it as, it as it is at the moment. So yes, this is what I do to uh, to work out the code. I'll create um, a class which represents the robot itself. So in this case, it's called Bunny. Um, so let's have a look at this code in a little bit more detail. I'll go full screen on this and go back over to the code there. So what I do, um, I will set up all of the, oh, we don't actually need those to be doing that right now. The thing I don't like about Thonny <laughs> is commenting out code is not as straightforward as in Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio, you do like command and forward slash, and I'll just comment out the code. On this one, it's like command and three, and it's like it's just not an intuitive keystroke to do. Um, so yes, so the first thing we do is we set up all the different limbs with the appropriate servo. So servo is the um, servo 2040 library that we brought in, and servo 2040.servo1 is a constant which refers to the pins and all the um, all the functionality that goes into that particular servo so we can set the values and so on we can basically just represent that and represent that in this one thing that we're calling head so head neck right left uh, right foot left foot left leg right leg these are all the front then we've got the tail then on the back we've got the right leg the right foot the left leg and the left foot and they're all on the particular um, servo pins that I plugged it into so if you built your own you'd probably have to just figure out which of these that you use so I created a tiny bit of code there called wiggle um, so if you type in um, a particular servo number so like servo one and then run it through wiggle you'll just see that servo wiggle a little bit and then you can go all right I now know that that particular servo is the foot or the head so that's what I did to uh, calibrate all that I then do um, a very simple init, so it just prints out Pico Cat is online. So we need to change that to Robo Bunny because it's not Pico Cat. And then we have some properties. So properties, if you've not come across these before, if you've got a variable such as the name, um, we want to be able to set and get the name of the the robot. Now we could we could just have a variable up here that's just called name. But if we wanted to protect that name from, say, swear words, or we wanted to make sure value is between, between a particular range, we can't just give people access directly to the variable. We need to protect it in some way. So what we tend to do is we do this double underscore, the variable name, and then we'll have a property and a setter. So def name with a property uh, decorator means that we can then just return whatever the current self.name is. Self just means refer to this particular instance of our bunny because we've got more than one. And then the name.setter means we set that variable. So self.name equals whatever value. But if we wanted to put something else in there, like, you know, if it's got a rude word in there from this particular dictionary, then don't allow it. Um, so we could do that. Then I create each of the behaviors. So nod. Um, so what we do there is we say the neck value is zero. We sleep for half a second. We then say the neck value is minus 50. So it'll, it'll go down. Um, or go up depending which orientation it's in sleep for um, half a second and then we'll say make the neck value back to zero again so we'll, it'll either look down or look up and then back to where it was 
wagging the tail so we've just taken uh, how many times you want it to wag it so in the, we have a for loop then for however many times we've passed in there we have as n and then we say this so the tail value is 50 we sleep for a quarter of a second then minus 50 and then we sleep again for a quarter of a second and it'll do that n times now we've not actually used the variable n we could actually just use an underscore in that case because we don't actually assign it and that'll work exactly the same I just find it doesn't look particularly intuitive for new users if you do that. So I do tend to leave in, um, you know, I or N or some kind of regular kind of counter there. Um, and then we then set it back to the midpoint, which is just right in the middle. Um, so what else have we got there? So we look left, um, we look right, we look ahead. So they're just setting those head values to minus 50, 50 or zero in the middle and on this particular servo library zero is exactly the midpoint between the minimum and maximum value so if it's between zero and 180 degrees this is 90. Standing up then just means that we set all the foot and leg values to be a specific value so on this one it says 50 I think they're actually supposed to be zero actually let's just try that and um, let's try importing our bunny again and then this time let's do b equals bunny and then b dot stand up like so and let's go back over to our shared thing for a second and try that i'm going to click run and do i need to do that again so we just do b dot stand up uh, oh some reason that didn't work let's just try importing that all again so from bunny import bunny b equals bunny b dot it says pico cat so what ha what's happened there is we've not uh, uploaded our code back to the robot so let's just do that so what i'm going to do is right click on that there upload that to the file system overwrite it yes and then let's try that all again so let's just do um import bunny b equals bunny it says pico cat again so what have i done wrong there it should say um it should say bunny shouldn't it so where we've got the name being set and it says pico cat is online it should say bunny is online so it's in the name setting thing hello my name is ah right so that's that's it should be there yeah so robo bunny Let's just make sure that's saved, Bonnie. Let's upload that to there. Let's give it a reboot. Okay, let's try that again. So, B equals Bunny. Robo Bunny's online. There we go. That's better. So, right, B dot stand. Oh, uh, yeah, B dot stand up. And instead of doing that Superman pose, he's kind of going straight down there we go that's more like it now what i was saying before about the servos are not staying in place simply because i've got the servo horn upside down in effect in the wrong way so it's not gripping all of that servo properly which means that these are all um, in the wrong kind of orientation now they they seem to be gripping quite well to be honest but this back one is just completely loose uh, and that's because of that servo horn thing but that's looking better so that code is immediately better i'm pretty sure i've updated this code i probably just haven't copied it across so what we could do um, if i just open up a terminal because i think i was working in visual studio um, so if i just go into my micropython folder into our robo bunny uh, what's this called bugs and i do git pull says we're already up to date so maybe i've not pushed that wherever i've wrote that never mind okay so so what else do we need to do on this then so yeah that that hopping function is what i need to be working on next really and i'm, I'm essentially just going to take each one of these front left leg back left leg and i'm going to work through each stage of the hopping motion one bit at a time uh, and that will get me where i need to be let me just have a look if there's anything else See, I did work on this and I don't know where the actual code has disappeared to. So I'm a bit surprised at that, unless it's in hop down here. No. No, so that's the original Pico cat code. I've not put it in the bottom of here, have I? No. No. I thought maybe I, thought maybe I put it in the wrong um, 
Wrong place, but no, I've not. Cool. So if season equals rabbit, import duck, else import rabbit. <laughs> That's what Adam says. Love that. Cool. So if you're watching this um, on the replay, uh, this is the part of the video that I edit out and you'll not see any of the chat that we have after this point. So if you want to chat, you need to come watch live on a Sunday evening. Um, so goodbye for now and I shall see you next time.